Love Pancakes here, and joining me tonight on The Stack, I have CJ Lawler, and you can see him um, in TWE, or you were on like the KOBK show, or always at the gathering of the Juggalos. Yo. Uh, please welcome CJ Lawler. Yo, thank you for having me. It's an honor. It's a pleasure. It's, it's dope. I never get to do podcasts often, so when I do, it's, it's always fresh. I'm just excited that you want to come hang out with me tonight and chit-chat it up. Um, we were kind of talking before I started recording that we were kind of in the same place at the same time, but we never actually met each other. Yeah. And yeah. The Ships in the night or whatever they say. Yeah. And that we talk on spaces. So <laughs> yeah. Thank which you. can be a great thing or an absolutely terrible thing. Oh, oh, <laughs> it, though. it can be, it is definitely, definitely both. It can be both. Yeah. It's, it's done wonders for me. And it's also made me want to just smack my head off the wall. <laughs> No, that's fair. It just depends on like the group of people that are on and in spaces at the time. Like you can get a good group of people together and it's just, it's just fun. You get to, you know, chit chat with people. Hours will with, pass. You won't even realize it. Right. With your friends or like acquaintances, um, people that you may not even know, but that are just kind of also in the wrestling general area and space, or you can get just like the worst annoying people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah they say like stupid shit and so i don't know if I'm, am i allowed to cuss on here you're allowed to cuss yes sweet i'm a, I, I, I cuss far too much hard same <laughs> yeah. so um thank you for hanging out with me tonight no thank you for having me it's like i said it's it's, a, it's an honor i mean you get you get great guests on here so to be one of them you know being in the alumni of it it's an honor you know Aw, you flatter me. <laughs> no, no, for real. No, like for real. I've been wanting to do this for like a hot minute too. So I was like so excited when you hit me up and about it. I was like, fuck yeah, you know, like because it's always dope. You know, you're doing something right when people want to hear whatever bullshit you have to say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I so, you know like, you're doing something right. I'm glad that you think that. Um, I like being able to talk with people that maybe don't do like a thousand podcasts. Like I don't want to talk to somebody that's on like 50,000 podcasts. Like I don't care. Like no. e there's nothing new that you're going to gain out of talking to me. So <laughs> there's no point. Yeah. I mean, cause people, it, it seems like they almost have like a, I don't know if you watch like a lot of band interviews. I'm sorry. If I, I'm sorry if I cut you off. Um, oh no, you're fine. I don't know if you ever watch like a bunch of like interviews of a certain band, but like if, when you do, if you catch them on the same like media run, every interview is the same. And it's like the same thing with wrestling, where it's almost like every podcast is the same, you know? So like, if I watch a million, you were talking about Hanson before we started recording. If I watch a million Hanson interviews from the month of April of 98, right? They're all the same. There's nothing different in them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And even if you go to 99, the next year, there's still like, it's the same shit, you know? I'm not happy that you outed me as a Hanson fan, but that's fine. I'll let it slide. No, that's fine. I'm a juggalo. Trust me. You'll get more respect, <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of Jendalos and the Gathering, I'm going to just like dive right into that. Because you like just very recently did the Gathering. And you've yeah. done it before, correct? Uh, this was my seventh year going. This was my sixth year going as a fan. Seventh year in total. I went last year and uh, helped them run the JCW shows. I helped like, you know, set up the ring, tear down, did whatever they wanted. Just, just out of love. It was a free ticket. And, you know, I get a free ticket to watch my favorite band. I can't complain, you know, but so yeah, it was my seventh year in total. Um, yeah, I pretty much, I try to go every year, you know, I mean, everything juggalo and I'm, I'm there, I've been there, you know, started going to shows when I was 12 years old and I'm 25 years old now. You know? Wow. <laughs> like that is, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah i mean i i told uh i told my fiance when we left i was like you know last night that was the 35th time i've seen icp live <laughs> you know? that's not even counting all the times i met them and you know all the other shit that goes with it you know like 35 times in just a handful of years you know that's crazy so the gathering like what is some of the craziest stuff that you've seen at the gathering oh i saw um i've seen it all from like back in the day like when i first started going it, it was at a place not not to be long-winded but 
When okay. I first started going, it was, at, it was at a place called Cave and Rock. Hog Rock was the name of the place, I guess. And um, they didn't have no cops on the grounds. There was The security was incredibly lax. So you would see people just using whatever substance right in front of you, selling whatever, whatever substance right in front of you. Um, you would see like fights break out because it didn't bring in like the good crowd. It brought in the bad crowd because word got around over the seven years that they were at that location. It was like seven or eight years they were at Hog Rock. And uh, word got around after a few years that you could just do whatever at this festival. And as long as it wasn't, you know, heinous acts, you could just get away with whatever you wanted to do, you know? And uh, so like, you would see like people like shooting up drugs and stuff, like just terrible stuff like that back in the day when, when it was, wasn't a great place to, wasn't, a, well, it wasn't like the best festival to go to, but I mean, I seen like, I seen crazy, horrible stuff and I've seen great, amazing things. Like I seen uh, stuff like people just using whatever and I've the, the horrible things like that. And I've seen great things like, somebody robbing a bunch of people and them just destroying the guy's car. I seen, I seen it happen to where everybody was just destroying his car. They were throwing rocks at it. They were pelting it with shit. They were just ripping the hood off, ripping the doors off, breaking the windows off. Eventually there's video of it on YouTube. They, uh, they like roll the car. Uh, another guy takes a Jeep and he drove over it on his Jeep and he rolled his Jeep and everybody helped the guy get back up. Because this guy had stolen a bunch of people's stuff, like at least like 50 people's, like he just went, he went and ransacked their tents, their RVs, all that shit. And so all these kids got together and they just destroyed all his shit. <laughs> they kicked his ass, destroyed all his shit. Cause like, I guess like two, even before the gathering, he had robbed some other juggalo kids in his town. So I guess he just had it coming and he was just doing all this. He, the kid was on hardcore pawn. The, the the show from like 2011 2012 he was oh, on yeah. hardcore pawn selling stolen shit like and then he came to the gathering and did that and you know just shit like that i mean after after you go to so many you can only really rank things like on the crazy scale by that because like i see crazy shit like i like just like we were there last weekend and so last weekend um Excuse me. Um, last weekend, I saw a guy take a uh, raw squid out of a pickle jar and just threw it at one of his buddies and was like, ah, oh, yeah, I got you. And it was like, what the fuck? You know? That's so and random. Like, yeah, like, you know, and, it, and, it's, and it's much better now than it was 10 years ago. Like, you know, it's, you know, you have, there's a, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a security presence. There's not people doing crazy shit out in front of you anymore. And it, it's, it's an all right place to go if you're, like, wanting to dip your toes into, like, the juggalo culture. It's, it's, the gathering is a lot better to go to now than it was when I first started going. It was great back then, but I didn't, I don't, now that I'm an adult, I don't care for the lawlessness of it. If that makes any sense. Like, let's have, let's have a little bit of reform here, guys. Let's have a little bit of decorum, you know? <laughs> so you... Did you said you helped with the JCW stuff last year? Did they have wrestling on it this year? Did you wrestle? They did. Uh, well, I was supposed to wrestle, but um, I guess like budget cuts and shit like that, and they uh. change over. Uh, you know, booking. You know, uh, it happens frequently where like I'll get booked for JCW, and then they're like, "Oh, we got a new booker in. Um, can you just help us out?" That's what they did last year. This year they didn't ask me to do that, so I just enjoyed my weekend. But yeah, like. Um, I helped him out last year and I've done JCW a handful of times now. Oh, no, just, not just a few now and not, not a whole handful, just probably two or three times now that I've wrestled for them. But, uh, but yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, that's what I went and did last year. This year they had, uh, I think the main event was uh, Vampiro versus Josh Bishop from AIW and um, against, uh, it was Vampiro Bishop and, uh, I don't remember who the fuck else was in the main event. <laughs> I I didn't watch it. I was watching a rapper named Isham. I, I didn't watch the wrestling this year. <laughs> oh, Delirious. It was Delirious. From Ring That's of Honor. Fair. Delirious. Okay. Yeah, so That's... It's, it's cool. Yeah, it's, yeah, that sounds like an interesting main event. <laughs> yeah, I think it was um it was Madman Pondo versus uh versus uh Jimmy Lloyd, I think they had. <laughs> I think something Necro Butcher had something to do with it or something. I don't know. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that sounds, I mean, it sounds entertaining. 
if nothing else. It is. I mean, th their cards are hit or miss. You know, sometimes they have a really good card and sometimes their cards are like, eh, you know, it just feels thrown together. Well, the whole like atmosphere of it seems very interesting. Like, it's just a very interesting experience where it's like, part of me is like, I kind of want to go, but part of me is like, I don't think that I'm built for that world. <laughs> it's a very, it's a very sweet world. Like, it's like, I mean, I, I understand why people like trashed it so much back in the day. Like, I understand why, because there was a lot of shitty people in the scene, like good people, but not the best people. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I can I can see where it got a bad rap over the years, like the gathering and, and just juggle of culture as a whole, but it's a lot different now than it was when I was in when I was a kid, you know, coming up in the scene, like it's a lot sweeter. Like a lot of those people that were in it years ago, they're gone now. You know, they're they're off into whatever scene they're into now. And so it's very different now. It's it's I would recommend somebody to go to the gathering if they've ever wanted to go their whole life. I'd recommend them going like now, you know. Because all the shit you saw on Vice and all that shit, it's co completely different. I mean, it was always a, a welcoming culture, but if, if, you know, I could see where people are like, I don't want to be a part of that. You know, I, I can see it. Like, I don't get offended by it. You know? <laughs> well, yeah, my real only frame of reference is like, you know, what I've seen on Vice and like what I've like seen just kind of on the Internet, just being right. on the Internet my whole life. So. <laughs> but I do always appreciate how friendly it all seems in a way. Yeah. Like it, it seems is, like people are out to have a good time. They and are. Like, and it's a, it's a very come as you are culture. Like it, there's not like judge, judgment going on for if you don't have the newest shoes or the newest clothes or, you know, whatever, how tall you are, how short you are, whatever. Like it's, it's a come as you are thing. And, that's what I think attracts everybody attracted me for sure. You know, like the, the very, like you're perfect as you are, you know, like, and that's, that's a very beautiful thing of it. And I mean, like, there's always, like, it's always been that way, but there was always a lot, there was, there was, there was a lot of shitheads that made it like bad, you know what I'm saying? And like a lot of gatekeeping and in the culture and just, I could spend all fucking day talking about, the differences from 15 years ago when I first got into it to now, you know, like it's way better now than what it was back then, you know. So other than being a juggalo for many years, what was a young CJ Lawler like? I'm sorry, what? What were you like, like as a child? Like, uh, I mean, I was, I, I didn't really get, I mean, I got in trouble at school, but I was like, I was like infatuated with like wrestling, like just super into wrestling. Like that was my first like thing that I fell in love with, like in my life that I can remember, like just being like truly like uh, just fully invested in from the time I was like six years old till, you know, now, of course. So, you know, I mean, I mean, I, I, like, like, I mean, I was, I was a class clown for sure, you know, which probably still shows now, you know, like I was, I was an idiot, but um I mean, I didn't really get in a lot of trouble until I was a teenager. Like, I, I was out of trouble. I never got into major trouble in my life. Like, just, like, stupid little shit that you do as a dumbass teenager. But um, mainly, I was just, like, all I talked about, all I watched, all I thought about was pro wrestling. Like, from the time I first saw it as a kid till, you know, I got out of wrestling a little bit when I was probably about 11 years old. And then I found deathmatch wrestling when I was about 12, and I got back into it, you know. Because the shit that was on TV at the time, it was the PG era and TNA had the, you know, Hogan was in TNA when I was like 10, 11 years old. I was probably about 11, 12 then. And H Hogan was in it and they, they took away the six-sided ring. And I was just like, t mainstream wrestling was, there, there was no hope for me as a kid, you know, but I was, I was pretty cool. I was, I was pretty chill. I'm so old. But um, <laughs> be beyond that, <laughs> um how did you decide to pursue wrestling like what made you want i like you said you you loved it your whole life but like what made you really want to go find somewhere to train and like become a pro wrestler and and i, and, and I apologize if i'm being long-winded with any oh, of no. this um, by all means because this is a little this is like a little long-winded i uh 
I, I didn't want to be a wrestler from the time that I was like, I wanted to be a wrestler when I was like 17 again. And then when I was 18, I wanted to be a wrestler. And then I moved from Louisville back. I was, I was supposed to be in the first training class at the arena where like Billy Starks trained and all of that. I was living in Louisville, Kentucky, and I was really unhappy there. I just turned 18. I moved up there and um, me and Too Tough Tony worked out a deal to where I would start training for free. I would essentially just train for free and I would just pay Tony whenever I could. And Too Tough Tony and me, a huge JCW fan, I'm like, oh my God, Too Tough Tony's going to work with me. This is like the craziest shit ever. Like JCW champion. I mean, you know, I mean, he was the guy, you know, I mean, J J uh, Japanese, you know, wrestling fans just like, adored him, right? Like he was so over over there. And um, I was so excited. And then I, it's like, I was so depressed that I was like, fuck this, I'm going to move back to Chattanooga. And then when I moved back, I had so much shit on my plate that I was like, I don't even want to be a wrestler. Like, I'd rather just be a fan. I don't want to, I don't want to peek behind the curtain because it's going to hurt whenever I find out. Like, I knew that every, I like, I mean, are we kayfabe in here or are we? Whatever we you want to do. <laughs> okay, cool. We're going to, we're going to fucking shoot. But uh, <laughs> I, uh, I didn't want to know like what was a work and what was a fucking shoot. I didn't want to know none of that. I didn't want to know the terminology. I knew what a work and a shoot was and the, 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 the terminology, but I didn't want to know what like, Stupid little shit like taking a powder meant or, you know, drop down, powder out, get the fuck out of the business. I, you know, I didn't want to know what any of that meant. But uh, so, I, so, I, so I gave up on wrestling and I just didn't give a shit about it because I was like, at the time I was homeless and uh, I was like couch, couch surfing and um, just like trying to figure out what I'm going to do as an adult. You know, I'm, I've just turned 18. I, I moved out at 17, just turned 18, moved back to Tennessee and um it went on for years where like, I, I would keep up with wrestling, mostly indies, like Ring of Honor and such. I'd keep up with that and like what CZW was doing at the time. And uh, GCW was like in its like infant, infantry, or I don't know, infantry, in, infancy? In, infancy. Yeah, infantry. They were in their infantry. No, but uh, in their infancy, they were just little babies, little GCW babies. And uh, so I didn't really give a shit about being a wrestler. And then I had somebody close to me pass away and I just went down this like crazy spiral and I just wasn't doing good. And um, funny how like, you know, everything comes full circle. Uh, the kid that I went to all the Juggalo shows with when I was a, when I was a, a kid, a teenager, um, he was a pro wrestler. And I had always been like, that's cool, man, but I don't really want to do it. He always tried to get me to come out and like, get in the, he, tried, he always tried to break me in the business, but I didn't give a shit. I was like, whatever, I don't really care. And um, one day he came over and I was doing real bad. And uh, he's like, hey, man, why don't we go to, uh, why don't we go to this thing called the Scenic City Invitational tomorrow? He goes, Nick Gage is wrestling Carrie Awful in the main event. And I think you should just like check it out and maybe see if wrestling is something for you. And I was like, yeah, whatever, I'll go. And like, I, I still love wrestling. I just didn't want to be a part of it. And then I went and I could see like the fans reacting to moves. And I could see like how the fans reacted to, to like just to everything, just to, like these people. Like I, at the time I felt so like minuscule in life and I felt so, so like I didn't matter. Right. And it, and it felt to me like, this is the one place where I could feel like I mattered for 10 minutes, six minutes, whatever, you know? And so I told my buddy, I looked over at him. I was like, Hey, I'll go to training tomorrow with y'all. And then boom, next day I was in training and four years later, you know, here I am talking to you, you know, wow. awesome shit. I didn't even want to go fucking do, you know? <laughs> so didn't even, didn't even want to go to that shit. Wrestling finds you when you need it the most. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And it, and it gave me a place of belonging. And like, that was the best decision I ever made because had I kept doing what I was going to be doing, I'd have been dead, you know, probably, you know, not long after. Cause I was going down, like, I just wasn't doing good. I was just, I was fucking up, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we all go through like hard times. I'm glad that you are here now. Chit chat with you. me tonight. Um, like it's a very interesting story that the scenic city invitational brought you into wrestling to some extent. Oh, that train was next day, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, that's that's so awesome. And to you, what you were saying, I guess I absolutely 
feel that even within myself like I obviously I don't wrestle not anything I would ever contemplate doing I'm way too non-athletic for any of that but like I started going to like my local stuff like 10 years ago and now it's like consumed my entire life which I'm not mad at but now you're in the business (laughs) Blake and you fucking miss it (laughs) You it was know? like it was like one day I was at a show and our local guy was like, "Hey, you know, we don't have anybody to work door tonight. Do you want to work door?" And I was like, "Sure." <laughs> and then, yeah, and th- and then that's your thing. That's what you do from thence forward. Like yeah, whenever anybody asks, it's like how to get in the business, it's just like you just have to know the right people and be at the right place at the right time. Yeah, th- that's how I got on with TWE. That's exactly how. I mean, I I, I shouldn't be where I'm at. <laughs> you know, it was it was always, it's like it's like Forrest Gump. You're always like like I, I like I feel like Forrest Gump in certain situations because I'm like eh, I'm looking around. I'm like, there's Anthony Henry. There's a, uh, you know, uh, J D Drake, whoever. And I'm like, man, I got lucky. You know. <laughs> I feel very fortunate that I'm able to travel for wrestling. Yeah. Um, I live I live in Nebraska. So Oh shit. I thought you were in like Idaho. No. <laughs> I live in Nebraska. And so um, you know, I have my local that I go to, but outside of that, there really isn't a lot here. So right. that I'm able to travel and go to wrestling in like the Philadelphia area or go to like Mania Weekends or go to Chattanooga for Scenic City or whatever. Like, yeah, that makes like that's so, this makes me happy. Wrestling I'm glad I get to get like, right? I'd have never yeah. got to see, I, I would have never got to see Washington, D.C. or New York City or New Jersey or Pennsylvania if it weren't for pro wrestling. Like, I would have never saw those places, you know, like, I mean, I probably would have maybe ventured up there one day, but like pro wrestling took me to all these different places, you know, and all these like little shitty towns, you know, across the Midwest and the South and, you know, these like little one horse towns that ain't got shit going on. <laughs> like that's, the, that's what I love out of it. You know, I, you know, I, even more than the big cities, I love seeing these little shitty fucking towns, you know? Oh man. It's just, it's very, it, as long as you are enjoying yourself and enjoying the experience, I think it's, at least for me, it's always, it's been good, so. Well, it's like, like, I try to tell, like, uh, anytime, like, new trainees, like, stick around from, like, TWE, from the TWPC, I always try to tell them, like, you know, don't measure your success by somebody else's, measure it by your own, because, like, if you're already success, you took your first bump you know, you learn how to run the ropes. I mean, your success already, because there's some people that never, that, 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 that always talk like they could do it, but they never do it. Like your success, like if you can, if you can travel to a place you've never been before because you're on your way to pro wrestling to whether it's pho- like photograph it, whether it's to cover it, whether it's just to be a fan, like your success. I mean, if you're seeing new places because of wrestling, I mean, that's, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing, really. You know, I mean, Something gets overlooked, I think, by a lot of people, you know. Yeah, the just like the little things about it, or like the people that you meet. Um, just to really just experience it is it's been very yeah. good to me. So for the good or the bad, you know. Right. So what were some of the best things that you learned while training? Like what's the stuff that that's sticks with you or that you would impart on somebody somebody coming up um i always tell people like in wrestling that are coming up i'm like yo training fucking sucks <laughs> like it it does because you're bumping your ass off in front of nobody there's no adrenaline it hurts so damn bad when you're wrestling out there in front of people you feel that adrenaline you feel the you feel the 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 energy from the crowd and like not to be like cliche but you feel the energy from them and you um excuse me sorry um you uh you get all these things you get all this feedback you know like you know when you're doing something wrong you know when you're doing something right you know when you're wrestling but when you're training you're very awkward you don't know you know you don't know where you know you don't know where to put your feet you don't know where to put your hands like Ricky Bobby like I don't know through my hands but um 
you don't know what to do with any of that. And um, so like, like training sucks. Like it does on the grand scheme of things, but the best, like the most valuable things I learned about training is that you're never above somebody else and they're never above you. Um, Cause I've seen, I've seen a lot of people, I've seen a notable wrestler get kicked out of a locker room for like making fun of trainees. And it's like, Hey, this trainee may suck right now, but he probably has something that you don't have right now. And you're fully trained, you know? So you can't ever like, like I, like we, before we started recording, uh, we were talking about comparisons. We compare people in a job, right? Like if, if you say that, Oh, I'm doing better than you are per se, that jealousy, you know, like jealousy breeds envy. So like, comparisons will kill all and like don't come like what my advice would be like uh don't don't compare yourself to somebody else when you're training and you're just learning because you're starting out and you're learning and they they did too and there's still shit that they didn't learn and that was like one of the biggest lessons i learned from training that and like i mean just like i guess i don't know if it's called grit but like just essentially like believing in yourself and not giving up like yeah you may suck today but you, you know over time you're not gonna fucking suck you just keep at it and you keep you know um Mouth shut, ears open. You know, one of the biggest things I learned in wrestling in general is sometimes shut the fuck up and let 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 grown folks talk. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> soak up the game. You know, like E40 would say, I'm a huge uh, old school hip hop fan. E40 would always say, like, you know, soak up game and soak that game up. You know, like, cause uh, you know, it's just I don't know. It's there's so I've learned so much shit and like a lot of wrestling is. Some people, some people make wrestling harder than what it should be. Wrestling is common sense for the most part, besides like etiquette and shit like that. It's common sense. Now in the ring is different. Like, of course, like when you're learning moves and shit, but like maneuvering through the business is common sense. Like if this wouldn't work at your shoot job, this isn't going to work here. You know, like, so, you know, some wrestlers and wrestling personalities make this shit out to be harder than what it is. Like you can do really well by shutting the fuck up and keeping your ears open, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, um, when I, so long time ago, probably you were probably like seven. I used to, when I was in college, book bands to play shows and like, yeah, like your opening bands probably going to suck every time because it's like the only way to get good is to do it. And if no one's going to give you a chance yep. to do it, you're never going to get good. And yep. like, that's kind of how I look at like wrestling too. And like wrestlers that are just starting out. It's like, yeah, your first few matches probably going to suck. But like you have first to hundred, <laughs> like you have to suck before you can be good. Like you can't get good unless you try. So I still fucking suck. I'm really I'm I'm a master of the six minute match. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't I can't do no fifteen minute match. I'm really I'm a really good six to eight minute guy. You know, <laughs> like, I don't care. You know, and that's another thing too is that like while we're at it, like a lot of like sometimes you have to know your role. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was you have to know, to like, like, so I know that I'm a really good six to eight minute match guy. I'm not going for work rate matches. I'm going for old school psychology based ish. I'm not really that great at psychology, but you know, like, I, you know, um, you have to go for what you're good for and you have to use your strengths as like you, you know, throw them weaknesses, like work on the weaknesses, but showcase your strengths and, you know, um, know your role like because not not um, not everybody gets to be John Cena you know sometimes you have to be you know spark plug Bob Holly you know like hardcore hardcore Holly didn't always get to be a badass he wasn't always a bad motherfucker like <laughs> he was Mr. Race Car Driver for a long time <laughs> and like that's the thing that we're like I think a lot of young talents coming in and I'm, of course I'm a young talent myself but when I see a lot of younger talents coming in they want to be like Kenny Omega and like fucking the young bucks and shit. And it's like, no, nah, you got to walk before you can run brother. Like, <laughs> you know, know your fucking role and fucking always work on it to get a new role, you know? Yeah. Well, and it's like, everyone plays a part in the show. You can't mm-hmm. have, everyone can't have 15 minute matches. Like nope. you need those, you know, those, those shorter six to eight minute, you know, yeah. matches. you need, you need different things to keep people interested. So, yeah, you definitely do. You know, I mean, I've spent, you know, you know, I, my first two years in wrestling, they had me doing like 15 minute matches. Cause I, I didn't always, I didn't always train at TWE. I got to TWE really late, not really late in my career, but I'd already been in wrestling two years by the time I got, by the time I ever even met Jaden. And, um, 
like they used to have me in like, you know, 12 to 14 and, you know, 14 to 16 minute matches. And I could never like figure out how to work that long. And then like I met Jaden and Jaden was like, yeah, no, we'll give you six minutes. And that was where I came into my own as a pro wrestler, you know, like doing the 15 minute matches, you know, I, I was like, I don't know what the hell to do. Like <laughs> you can only do so much shit. Like, and I was, you know, fresh off of training. My first match was a 12 minute match. <laughs> like, wow. I would no, love to see the video of it. Cause I know it fucking sucked. Most people's first time, like first matches are like, so you're going to be in a rumble. Yeah. <laughs> or a scramble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My uh my first match was uh in Dalton, Georgia. Um it was in Dalton, Georgia, in an old like tobacco silo. And it was like it was like March, so it was still cold out. So it was like 40 degrees in this like little fucking tobacco silo. And uh Oh, it, it was it was the worst. I felt so bad for people that paid their money to to see that match, you know. I would love to see that match. Also, 40 degrees is not cold. 40 degrees is fine. 40 degrees is like a hoodie. Yeah, right. I, I grew up in Chicago. So like yeah, I, I lived I lived in Chicago for my first eleven years of my life. So uh, 40 degrees wasn't cold until I I lived out here for a few years and then you, you get you get acclimated and you're like man fucking 40 degrees I'm staying in bed you know 40 degrees here like in March people be wearing shorts like <laughs> oh yeah like because I remember when I was a kid I used to get all excited for uh for March because I'm like oh it's gonna get warm out and it's only like 38 degrees 39 degrees you know I'm like this is sick you know <laughs> But the sun is shining and there's not snow on, well, there's not snow blowing, so it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you can't complain. <laughs> um, who has had the most influence on you both in and out of wrestling? Oh, my God. Um, fuck. <laughs> this is going to sound super corny, but uh, I would say... Uh, I would say uh, I would say Violent J from the Insane Clown Posse. I'm not gonna lie to you. It sounds incredibly corny as I wear a Hatchet Man jersey. Um, Violent J, when I was a kid, right? So like, I didn't really, I didn't, I never really had like the best, like, uh, I never really had the best relationship with my family growing up. You know, like, uh, I grew up like, uh, you just like we talked about shit, but like we didn't really. It was a really old. I grew up with like a, like a pretty like progressive, but very also in the same sense in the same breath, very old school like mother and father, right? Like my dad, my dad never cried in front of me. You know, like uh, my mom was very um, just old school, you know. And um, so like a lot of times I had questions. And I, there would be nobody to answer them but, like, ICP, so specifically Violent J, because Shaggy was always, like, the funny guy. He's the, he's a, he's a, he's the other clown, the, the sad-looking clown, the happy one's Violent J. And um, Violent J always, uh, if you looked deeper than, like, the main songs that you would hear from ICP, like Chicken Hunt or Hocus Pocus, and, like, even, like, I don't know, you probably heard Miracles, right? Yeah. Everybody's heard Miracles. But if you listen to what he's saying in Miracles, he's saying, like, there's all this beautiful shit in life, and if you blink, you'll miss it. And that's what the whole song's about. But it was just that one line where Shaggy's like, fucking magnets, how do they work? I don't know, you know? <laughs> like, you know, and, it, like, the whole song got shitted on and, like, made fun of by the mainstream media because it was these two fucking assholes singing it. But anyways, I digress. Um <laughs> Violent J always had the most, uh, to this day, to this day, uh, he has, he's the, he's the person, like, whenever, like, I need, like, just, like, just, I don't, like, whenever, like, I really just need to hear what I need to hear, I always, like, throw on um, a song by Violent J called Simple and Blunt, and, um, you know, and he has this other song called Shiny Diamonds, where he says, like, you might discover your niche, but look, you ain't a bitch, all this just days after you was gonna quit. Like in the sense of like you might you might find a reason to stick around, whether it be in life or your job or your hobby or your side hustle, your side profession. Like you might you might discover like, oh, I am the shit at this and you were about to quit, you know, and like 
so yeah, like Violent J is the person I, I look up to the most in my life. Um, because like I said, when I was a kid, you know, my parents never had the answers, but this fucking guy painted up like a clown throwing pop on the crowd, he has the answers, <laughs> you know. That's that, that is that is that is my uh, I, I hate to use the word idol or hero, but that is my hero and idol, you know, oh. definitely 100%. That's so like that's sweet and touching. <laughs> such a sidebar. So I'm such a violent J Mark that last year at the gathering, they announced that they were going to stop touring and ICP tours about twice a year. When I was, when I was homeless before I ever got into wrestling, I used to just work a job, save up the money and I would go follow the tour. And, you know, so like in 2016, I saw ICP like seven times that summer. Like I saw him so many times and um, it's just what we did back then. And uh, Violent J announced that he had heart failure at the gathering last year. And when I tell you I fucking cried, I cried my fucking eyes out. I will say in front of anybody, I don't give a shit because like all this, this thing that I just like my constant, my entire, I've been listening to ICP since I was like seven, you know, (laughs) which is crazy. It's such a crazy statement. But I've been listening to them my entire life. It's been my outlet, ICP and wrestling. And uh, I fucking cried my eyes out. I was fucked up about it for weeks after I got home. You know what I'm saying? As if like my actual family member, somebody close to me that I knew all these years, you know, this guy, I mean, I've met Violent J a million fucking times over, but it affected me. It hurt me so much that I fucking, it was the first time my fiance ever saw me cry, you know, <laughs> like, I love it that much. I love it that much, you know. I will never shit on anybody for having feelings. So No, for sure, for sure. Have all the feelings. I'm a feelings gal. I cry for everything. I don't even care what the feeling is. Doesn't matter. I can be sad. I can be happy. I can be excited. I can be mad. Um, frustration is a big one for me. Anytime is a cry time for me. So, oh my god, the other night I was watching we uh South Park did uh the 25th anniversary concert right in, in Denver at the Red Rocks, and um, they brought out Rush and Matt Stone from South Park had no idea, and like you know, he was just like freaking out that Rush, he was gonna play on stage with Rush. I'm like over there crying and shit. I cry fucking. I cry. I cry a lot. <laughs> you know? Hell yeah, man. It's a beautiful thing. You should cry. You should, you should always cry. You know? I mean, I'm a crier, so hell yeah. I like. I cried twice at, at the SCI when I was there. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. I I cried when when uh when Aaron Aaron Wade got uh he won his match and they they let him know they gave him the poster that he would be in futures for 2020, I think. Um. We were all standing there watching the match. I'm over there just like streaming tears. Just <laughs> I love Aaron Wade. You know? I was so happy for him. I'm over there crying my eyes out. You know? Oh, that's I cute. Love him. love him. Love that boy. <laughs> I have had him on the stack before and he was a delight. <laughs> oh, he's the best. I love him so much. Anybody that doesn't like Aaron Wade, like you're out of my circle. <laughs> you know? Right, like something like there's something amiss. <laughs> like top five human beings of all time. Like that's Jesus Christ included on the top five. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you say has been your greatest achievement in wrestling so far? And that can be anything that you want it to be, any way you look at it. Not quitting, for sure. Not quitting. Um, this summer has been like the roughest summer I've ever had of my adulthood, you know? So mm-hmm. like, cause I, I got in a head on wreck. I lost my car. I still don't have a car. I'm using my fiance's car right now. And um, there's a lot of times where I just wanted to quit wrestling. And um, uh, which, I mean, a lot of people probably give me shit for admitting that in an open forum like this, but like, I'll be real. Like my mental health was taxing on me. And I was thinking to myself, like, is, is this shit really worth it? Like, you know, and there's been other times where I wanted to quit too, where like, where I was in really toxic environments in wrestling coming up before I met Jaden and them and I wanted to quit. And um, not quitting is probably, probably my number one um, 
achievement because this shit is very taxing when you're like a in ring performer um because you see other people that maybe shouldn't that you know damn well shouldn't have that opportunity but they have it but like you eat all this shit and they don't you know and like it's one of those things where it's like you kind of have to check yourself and be like nah my time's coming this asshole's time is coming and going but my time's coming and so it's one of those things where like it becomes very mentally taxing and it becomes like almost like a masochist game i guess i don't know uh, i don't even know if that's the right uh terminology <laughs> Uh, I dropped out in the ninth grade. I have an eighth grade education. So, I mean, you know, I'm doing my best here. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, that and, like, and I, like you know, I, I, I'm not trying to c- continuously talk about, like, ICP and shit. But uh, wrestling for JCW and wrestling the guy that broke me into the business at my first JCW match, um, that's, like, besides the not quitting shit that would be like that and that are like number one where like neck and neck at number one where like uh we discovered the culture together we fucking we went begged our parents to buy the cds for us together we went to our first juggalo shows together i took him to see twisted which was a band that was with icp at the time they were like the number two juggalo band they i guess they still are they fucking suck now but they were the shit back in the day and uh um anyways uh you know we went to see twisted together i took him to his first icp show when we were i was 13 he was 15 uh, and uh <laughs> i was 12 and he was 14 at our first juggalo show and uh um, madman pondo booked us to wrestle each other and uh it was like such a dream come true because we, we would backyard wrestle each other and pretend that we were at JCW backyard wrestling and then we got to wrestle each other. And that was, that's probably my number one besides the not quitting shit. That's why that's my number one achievement. And I talk about it all the time. You can ask any TW guys. I don't ever shut the fuck up about it because all my friends got to do all this like, really cool shit. And my biggest goal was to always like, you know, um, a lot of my friends goals are to get signed or to go to another country to wrestle. My goal was to always just be, a character at jcw and i created my own character i did the whole nine i was like i I'm, I'm you know what i'm saying i just really wanted to be a jcw wrestler you know like and to, to to wrestle against my the guy that who originally trained me and originally broke me into business and we you know we both found a community as teenagers as, as like late i guess like tweens into teenagers that's where we, we found this community together and so like, that is like my number one, even though me and him, we, we, we be beefing sometimes <laughs> like he, he's, he's my boy, but you know, like he pisses me off and I piss him off, but you know, that's still like my number one crowning achievement in wrestling. You know, I mean, there's, there's a few, but that's probably the biggest one that not quitting, you know, cause anybody watching this that may consider getting a wrestling, you're going to fucking, you're going to have a lot of thoughts flooding in your mind of, is this shit for me? Because this shit is. This shit, will, this shit will chew you up and spit you out, baby. I hate to break it to you. <laughs> you know? like, this shit will fuck you up. <laughs> if you let it. You know? That's with anything, though. Yeah. Well, you know, it's good to be honest about it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm not trying to, like, shit on anything or anybody. But, I mean, just to be, like, like, I mean, like, I think anybody would tell you. Like, you see all these wrestlers that leave the Fed at uh, WWE. And, like, the lead WWE, and, like, they won't wrestle for, like, six months because they're, like, this shit, shoot them up and spit them out. You know, like, fucking, I think Paul London didn't take bookings for, like, three months after he got released. Because it's, like, I mean, when when you love it so much, it's, you know, it can, it can destroy you eventually if you let it, you know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't I don't know either. I don't have it. I'm not, I'm not, I don't do nothing, shit. No, 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 nothing like that, no. I don't know. I, I, I have my opinions on things, and some people agree with them, some people don't, you know. That's what it is. Man, I am just, I'm just a platform for you. That's all, that's all this is. This I'm is just, uh, I'm just a lonely boy born and raised in South Detroit. <laughs> Took the midnight train. Did you know that I hate Journey? 
yo, you may hate Journey, but like, yo, you know I the hate fucking, Journey. Uh, you know the album cover that looks like there's like little spaceships all over yeah. it. Yeah. If you turn the album cover upside down, it's guitars. Okay. So good. T- I- I'll file that away. I don't know shit else about that. Journey. I just know that one song. I hate Journey. I hate Journey. Like, what? it is a known fact that I hate Journey. Why? I talk about it all the time. What? I don't like Steve Perry's voice. Do what? I don't like Steve Perry's voice. It's yeah, warbly. It is. He sounds like a bird. Not like a good bird. <laughs> it sounds, his voice, like, like Journey, if, okay, so, like, if you don't know who Rush is, you don't know who Boston is, you don't know who, uh, I'm wrong. It was Boston with the with the album cover. I'm totally wrong. It wasn't Journey. Okay. <laughs> it was Boston. I just realized that if you take Boston, Journey, Rush, Led Zeppelin, and you don't know nothing about those bands, and you say, "Hey, can you like figure out who sung this song?" You have no fucking clue. Like, I think they, that they all sort of sound a little similar. You know, like yeah, they do all kind of have like a similar like vibe. That was like big like arena rock time, which could not snooze a palooza for val um if it makes you feel better i fucking hate acdc that's fair i'm not a big acdc fan either all their fucking songs AC/DC. sound the same Ozzy, all their songs sound the same i can't stand ozzy osbourne not the biggest fan either i like adam priest theme song that's pretty cool <laughs> you know, like, adam priest <laughs> my bestie girl we're like this i don't even know what his birthday is i just say that shit because it makes me laugh i have no idea what this man's birthday is or none of that shit well i mean that's that's on you if you want to make adam priest your bestie i do it just because i know it bothers him so much like (laughs) if adam priest has one hater it's me if Adam Priest has no haters, it means it means that I'm dead and I'm not around anymore. Like, <laughs> I love giving, I love making that man's life just chaotic. You know, <laughs> Lord knows I, I love him, but also I hate him. Adam Priest, great wrestler, just fun to boo. I just enjoy, <laughs> like some people, you just need to boo, and he's just kind of one of them. I don't to tell you, he got to. He's fucking. He, he, he just looks like an asshole. He truly does. Like, he really does give off, like, if you, like, never encountered him, like, big jerk vibes. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's such, a, he's such a dick. I don't like him. <laughs> Man, fuck I'm, Adam I'm, Priest. When this, when this drops, I'm sending him this clip. <laughs> Adam Priest, if you're out there watching, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> he's a right. He's like, mine, I mine. That ain't cool, mine. I man, why'd you say that about me on that podcast, man? I come on, man, roll tide, man. <laughs> Fucking asshole. Fuck him. <laughs> you know, I didn't know we were shooting tonight, but I'm for it. Let's go. <laughs> well, fuck, I'm gonna hit him in the head with a bottle when I see him. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna do none of that shit. I'd appreciate probably fucking twist me up like a fucking pretzel. <laughs> I ain't fucking with him. So if you had an action figure of yourself and it was one of the action figures that like had like speaking where you could like hit a button and it would say things, what would you want it to say and what accessories would it come with? It would say, um, it would say, uh, hey man, can you go to the store, give me another beer, man, give me another 12 pack. And then the accessories would probably be another beer and another, and another 12 pack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But it would be like one of those. Uh, 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 do, do you are you into like any pro wrestling figures at all? Yeah, kind of. Um, do you remember the the Jack specific line where it was like deluxe aggression? Where yeah. Like, like their stomachs moved in and like their arms moved all weird and like you could do like they had like all the they were like more detailed. Like this they had like more points of articulation. Six. Yeah, like more articulation. Um, yeah. Because it was a Jack. Because if you remember, like Jack Specific, they always had the the wrestling figures that had the same bodies, same arms, same hands. They were all like the same height, and like there was no like individuality in those figures. And like they made like maximum aggression or deluxe aggression, aggression. And um, 
it would be like a deluxe aggression figure. Maximum aggression was like the 12 inch figure. It was like the really big one. They only did like five lines because nobody wanted to play with these things that are this fucking big. You know, <laughs> these things are like this fucking tall. They're huge, you know? <laughs> what are you going to do with that? When I was a kid, that's what I played with. I, I would, uh, I would, uh, beg my mom to buy me the deluxe aggression figures when I was a kid. I fucking, my mom would begrudgingly, she'd be like, fine, you know, throw it in the car, mad as hell, <laughs> you know? Aww. What would your figure say? I'm about pancakes. <laughs> How do you like your pancakes? What waffles, would the uh what, what waffles would the are classist? Be? Um maybe like um maybe like a phone and earbuds or a stack of pancakes. <laughs> I mean honestly, it would fucking sell. I'd buy one. <laughs> I don't know Who why anybody would here? Yeah, well he's big and scary and does stuff. I mean you do shit too, so like honestly, we need to get you a fucking figure. I don't think I need a figure. And also, I do not do anywhere near what Cruel does. He's he's very tall and very scary. I'm I'm calling fucking the major uh, wrestling figure podcast. We're getting a fucking we're getting a fucking uh, major bendums. We're getting a major bendums coming. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna be able to like bend in shitty, terrible shape. Have you ever seen those things? No. They're like they're like the you know, do you remember like the old bendums figures from like the nineties yeah. where they would yeah. make yeah. like. That's what like, they remade them, and like they're the worst fucking figures ever. Because like when you bend them, they only do shit like this, or they do like that. Like they fucking <laughs> suck. They're the worst figure ever. It's I've never seen ever. that wrestling hold. So <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's about like that. You know? <laughs> so, um, would you rather go back in time and wrestle yourself for your first match, or go forward in time and wrestle yourself five years from now? Oh, I'd, I'd rather go back and wrestle myself my first match and tell him that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and it's not always going to fucking suck forever. Because uh, my first... So, like, I thought that, like... <laughs> this is incredibly embarrassing, but I, I'll fucking say Ooh. it. Because uh, <laughs> I don't believe in... Uh, I don't believe in um, holding back your feelings about things as time goes on. I think you should be able to say that when I first got into this, this and this, like, it fucking sucked. Or it was awesome. But um, when I first when I first um, decided that I would go train, I thought that like in a year I'd be in Mexico or I'd be in Japan or I'd be anywhere but Tennessee wrestling, right? I thought that I was like, I was like, this shit looks easy. Like I understand wrestling. I can do this. And um, when I had my first match, I remember going to the back. And I felt, I felt okay that I had my first match, but I also felt like, you know, if I keep having these matches, I'll always just be a shitty local wrestler forever, you know? And I wish I would love to go back and wrestle myself now and say, hey, bud, we're not doing 15 minutes. I'm going to give you a hot three minutes because you're fucking brand new to this. You're halfway trained. You don't know what the fuck you're doing. So maybe, uh, Maybe we should have a hot three minute, four minute match. We'll go out there and have fun. How about that? You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> and I would love to tell my future self or my, my past self as now and be like, hey, bud, in a few years, it becomes worth it. I promise, you know, <laughs> like in a few years, you'll be very happy you did this. And I was, I was happy that I was like, like, and don't, don't like, don't like, you know, don't get it, anybody get it twisted that I wasn't happy uh, at the time. I was really happy with wrestling but i also felt like if i didn't leave the scene i was at then i would just be the same stagnant you know person you know but if you could create your own title what would it be for and how would it be defended Oh my god, it would be a fucking hardcore title. It would be uh, the TWE hardcore title. We've been trying to get Jaden to do it for years. He won't do it. <laughs> Jaden, do a TWE hardcore title. Especially now that it. especially now that ICW is coming to Chattanooga all the time. Like he won't bring do it, it in. 
Jaden. He won't do it. I would be the head of that. I would do so well in that in that fucking division. I would just murder it. But uh, he don't want to do it. And I understand why. I mean, I, I don't know why exactly, but I just imagine that uh, it's for a really good reason. <laughs> you know? Well, um, I would love to do a hardcore title. I would just absolutely love that. I, I, I don't like doing regular wrestling anymore. Like, it's not that much fun to me. I enjoy playing with the environment more now. Like, it's just it makes wrestling fun for me. And that's what it's all about. Having a good time. That's it. Other than your gear and your phone and like your wallet, what do you not leave for a wrestling trip without? Oh shit, I'm so bad at fucking packing besides like my gear and my wallet. I'm so fucking bad at it. Um shit. Honestly, I'm so bad at wrestling that <laughs> I just remember my gear and my wallet. Or not wrestling, but at life. Um uh here lately it didn't so make like it my, better <laughs> my uh my my uh my my i have an iphone so like my charger port has gone out it just does not charge in the charger port no more and um so i have this like little circular charger that like connects to the back and so it keeps my phone charged so like i have to leave with that you know but um beyond that i mean uh I don't know. I mean, to make it sweet, I have this uh, Christmas card a fan gave me my first year in. They gave me a Christmas card. and It's not left my bag ever since. It's Aww. still in my bag. I went through my wrestling bag the other day and it was still in there. And I was like, yes. Now, this 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 fan isn't a fan anymore, doesn't care about wrestling, but it meant the, it meant the world to me that they went out of their way at the Walgreens or wherever they were at. And they bought a Christmas card for me specifically. So I keep that. And that's a. I guess that would be the. Uh, does it doesn't leave my bag, so it's with me at every wrestling show. You know, that's so cute. Yeah, it, like, it, like it was like a like a like a ten year old girl or something, and like I like I remember thinking when they when the kid gave it to me, it's like you're not gonna care about this anymore. You're about to find cool stuff that you like. Like you're about to get in like reality TV and shit, and like wrestling isn't gonna be cool anymore. It's gonna be lame but like thanks you know that was really nice i mean it, it, it really it it was like that was getting that christmas card was like the first thing that let me know i was like a wrestler and I, i've been wrestling for like nine months at that point you know oh that's so cute i can't remember the kid's name at all but i still got it oh well, i hope that they see this somehow and know that they meant that much to you yeah, I hope so too. So what is the wrestling word that you use most outside of wrestling? Oh my god. Um Jabroni. Really? Jabroni, that's the number one. I uh so I work uh I work in people's homes. Uh that's my real job. Hate to break it to y'all. I have a real job. Wrestling don't fucking pay the bills, not yet at least. But um, uh, I, I I deal with a lot of shitty homeowners, right? So like a lot of like like even right now, like as of today, um, I called a homeowner Bud, and I was like, hey Bud, uh, you know this and this and this. And he goes, first off, my name's not Bud, my name is such and such. And I was like, oh okay, how about not being a fucking asshole? How about that? Yeah, I was, I was like, I was like, you want me to call you dickhead? Because that's what it yeah. sounds like. Slow down, asshole. You know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like I texted my fiance and I was like, this fucking Jabron, like <laughs> fucking, you know, uh, you know, it made me so mad. And uh, so yeah, probably Jabron is probably because I, I use Jabron and Jabroni like more than any other like i don't really use a lot of wrestling terms around my few friends that aren't in wrestling because they just don't get it and i don't really feel like explaining it you know it's like that's my carny magic you know <laughs> but uh but uh yeah like jabroni is like universal because the rock made it universal thank god we had to have one person do it you know hey we had to have one person make one word universal you know fucking jabronis <laughs> what about you what do you use um for me usually it's um pop like oh that popped me oh yeah, or, yeah i use that too yeah or um is that a worker or shoot like i'll refer to things as, as work or shoot 
Um, the one I hear a lot from wrestlers probably more often than any other is gimmick. Everything's gimmick. And yeah, it's, yeah. it's a word so that you can infer, infer the meaning of or what you're referring to by context clues. So Yeah. Definitely. I uh I was saying gimmick so much when I first got in the business because I was so proud to be in the business that like I was just picking up any fucking wrestling lingo. Like it, <laughs> I used to like I used to tell people I'd be like, you know, oh are you a blue eye or a heel? You know, like a blue eye is like a baby face. Or like blue eye is like something they use and like uh I I don't know if this is true. I just heard it. And I, I heard that they use Jaden told me it's true, so I'm gonna believe Jaden. Um, in in like the UK wrestling scene, they don't call it a baby face; they call it like a blue eye. Is it true? I don't fucking know. I've not been there yet. But I I would like when I first got into wrestling, I was so excited to use wrestling terms that I'd be like, "Are you are you working a blue eye or baby face or blue eye or heel tonight?" And they're like, "Uh, I'm a baby face." I'm like, "Okay, yeah, you're a blue eye." <laughs> you know, like fucking stupid shit. Aww. You just but to yeah, like I had my dad using gimmick for a while. Uh, he he would call shit a gimmick, and I'm like, okay, dad, dude, calm down. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you like when you're traveling to shows or whatever? What do you listen to when you're on the road, other than um, ICP? Uh, a lot of podcasts, like a lot, like, um, <laughs> uh, Madman Pondo told me, he was like, he was like, I was, this is a few weeks ago, uh, probably about three weeks ago, I, I wrestled Madman Pondo and he was telling me, he was like, uh, what'd you do on the drive up here? I was like, well, I just listen to music and I was lying to him because I didn't want him to know I was listening to wrestling podcasts, you know, even though he, he's not going to call me a mark. Like, he hates the word Mark. He absolutely despises it. He's like, we are fans of this. But I didn't want to tell him that I was listening to wrestling podcasts. And I was like, I just listen to music, you know. And he goes, man, I hate whenever I get in the car to go to a town. And this is a horrible Madman Pondo, by the way. (laughs) If he saw this, he'd he'd want to fucking kill me. But um, he's like, man, I get in the fucking town. I get in the car and I'm ready to go to this fucking town. And, you know, motherfucker wants to put on a fucking Jeff Jarrett podcast. I don't want to fucking listen to wrestling on my way to work. He's like, I don't want to listen to work on the way to work pretty much, you know? And I was like, I get that, you know, but uh, mainly right now it's, uh, it's wrestling podcasts. Like um, I listen to a lot of uh, my world with Jeff Jarrett. It's, it's a really big favorite of mine. I love, I've always loved Jeff Jarrett since I was a little kid. I was a huge TNA fan in like 05, 04, 05, like when TNA was on like uh, Fox sport network, I was really into TNA back then. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm really into that right now. It just fluctuates. I mean, mostly, mostly wrestling podcasts, like something to wrestle with is like, I've gotten kind of tired of it. Um, Renee, Renee Dupree has an okay podcast. It's not that bad. You know, I mean, there's a lot of bitterness in it. It seems like, you know, I'm not gonna lie, you know, like I were shooting here, but uh, there, there, you, you like, when you listen to it, there's some really good shit to pick up on, and there's also like some shit that it's like I don't really care about. But mainly wrestling podcasts for right now. But uh, before, when I first started wrestling, I used to listen to this band called Lean, and um, they uh, they did the song Ocean Man. Uh, they did uh, the Loop de Loop song from um, SpongeBob. Um, I used to listen to Ween a lot. And I listened to it so much, I, I got it fucking tattooed on my arm. I don't know if we can see that there, but Aww. I got it fucking tattooed on me because I, I loved it so much at the time. But that's what I used to listen to a lot on the way to shows. But now it's just boring ass fucking wrestling podcast. Like it's it's to the point where my fiance does like never even gave a shit about wrestling, gave a shit about juggalo culture. I took her to see uh, Ric Flair's last match, right? Because it's just right up the road from us, and. Uh, she goes, uh, she goes, Jeff Jarrett, he's from that podcast, right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, he's from the podcast. And then Jeff Jarrett smacks the shit out of Conrad Thompson. And I went, honey, he just smacked Conrad Thompson. And she goes, I don't know who that is. I said, he's the one from the podcast. She goes, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Poor girls listen to hours and hours and hours and she'll never get back. 
of her life listening Aww. to Conrad Thompson and fucking whoever, you know? What do you listen to on the way to wrestling shows? Um, usually music. I have like a really long playlist of just like songs that are like upbeat so I don't get like sleepy. Um, yeah. Or I listen to the radio. I'm a radio girl. I like to flip around and listen to the radio. Hell yeah. I, yo, I do too. I found out who uh, Beanie was off of a road trip, a wrestling road trip. She uh, she had a song called uh, Super Lonely. And, I do not uh, know who that is or what that is. Oh, it was like uh, la, la, I'm la, la, old. La, I'm a lonely bitch. And like the song was awesome. It was a pop song. I, I, I really like pop music. Really like pop music. Uh, I'll throw on the pop stations and I'll fucking vibe out with it. It shit's dope. I love pop music. I fucking hated it when I was a teenager, but love it now. I have gotten a lot less judgmental in regards to what people listen to um, as I have gotten older. So yeah, me whatever too. makes you happy, man. I don't give a shit what you listen to. Me too. And I, and I, and, and I, and I'm sorry for being so long winded. Like I'm sure oh, that- you are fine. You can talk for as long as you, as long as you want to. Don't fucking tell me that. We'll be here all fucking. We'll be here till next fucking week. I'll be like showing you over like posters and shit I have. I'm like, isn't this cool? You know? I'll be like, my phone's gonna die. You're like, <laughs> I, I, you're like, I'm literally dying right now. I'm fucking. I'm 87. I'm like, oh, look at this. You know. Um, my longest podcast has been three and a half hours, and it was a a tag team. So. I chalk it up to they both had to answer, so that's why. If it's Ron Bass Jr., I'm gonna shit all over him. No, I'm just playing. It wasn't. We've never, we haven't been able to pin Ron Bass Jr. down for really. Like we've, we've been trying, like he's somebody that we've wanted to talk with for a long time, and it's like we just can't make it work. And Ron Bass Jr., we we need you on on the stack. So. Uh. <laughs> Ron Bass Jr.'s phone number, uh, uh, 813. <laughs> no, I'm just, yo, I'll text, I'll text him tonight and tell him to fucking set some shit up with y'all. Oh, That's yeah. my dude. Like, he's great. Um, we did a shirt for him. Um, he's... y'all did the fucking Johnny Cash shirt, right? Yeah. I have it. I brought Aww. it with me to the gathering. Oh, I have it. That shirt, a it's just like a great concept so for dope. a shirt. Ron Bass so Jr. is great. The guy that designed it is a dear, close personal, very good friend of mine. Um, designed my the staff logo actually. Who designed um, it? Uh, it's a gentleman. Um, he does wrestle under the name Tim Boston. Can we shout him out or? Yeah, I mean, like I said, like he's probably the best friend that I've made in like as an adult like yeah fuck yeah and i and i met him, shit. met him through wrestling so um tim boston for all your design needs <laughs> i'm literally looking at ron bass jr's uh air mattress like leaned up against the wall right now it's been sitting here for like three months like he hasn't came back and gotten his shit like <laughs> i'm about to start sleeping on it you know <laughs> It's only if you send him like a seductive photo of you sleeping on it, you'll be like it's me, cheating like, on hey, you. Piece of shit, get off my fucking bed. You know? <laughs> and you'll be like, "Come fight me." I love and... him so much. That's my dude. <laughs> Aww. Mm. The spaces thing we're talking about. I became friends with him off the of spaces. Isn't Bro, that I was great? Terrorizing that man on spaces. That was so bad. <laughs> Man, Spaces really had a moment there for a while. It did. It was so dope. I got on there, right? And I kept, like, fucking with him on Spaces. And then, like, eventually, like, we ran across each other in person. And then, like, you know, bestie girls ever since. It's my dude. Love that, man. I love that people, like, really have used Spaces to connect and, you know, make friends with other people in the industry and maybe talk to people or, you know, talk to people in a different way than they might be used to or wouldn't have otherwise. Like, I've met a ton of people through spaces. Like, there's a lot of, like, you, like, I would have maybe yeah. come across you before or at some other point. Um, but I definitely found you and got to 
kind of know who you were through spaces. Definitely. And like, that's what I was telling some of the trainees at TWE that like get on spaces because you can make really good friendships and connections with people um, through this, like through the stupid social media thing. Cause like, I honest, truly, I hate social media. I think it's like the worst thing ever, but you have to have it. If you're going to be in the wrestling business, you have to have it. Um, but like use it to your advantage. Like me and RBJ would never be friends if it weren't for me fucking just, just being a drunken asshole to him on, on span, not, not an asshole, but I was just like fucking with him so hard. <laughs> like he banned me from the spaces just cause I was giving him so much shit. And like, that's my dude. Now, every time I have like a major life problem, I call him and just bitch Aww. about it to him. So shout out to RBJ. Shout out to Tim Boston. Yes. Shout out to Tim Boston for designing the fucking sick ass RBJ shirt with the Rivera jacket on. He brought he, RBJ broke out that Rivera jacket on me at KOBK the first show last year. He's like, "Do you want to touch it?" I was like, "No, I don't want to fucking touch it, dude. I think it's fucking history." You know what right. I'm that's saying? like that's like an artifact. Like it belongs in a museum. Like it's funny shit. I actually have the steel chair right here that he uh, gave me a pile driver through. Aww. Sitting right there. That's my dog. That's my dude. He signed it for me, too. That's my dude. Aww. Is it (laughs) still functional as a chair? Fuck, no. He probably... No, it's bad. Like, (laughs) fucking... Let's see. Oh, no. It is not functional (laughs) as a chair. (laughs) (laughs) This thing's all fucked up. That's my favorite part about, like, those chair spots, man. It's like, all of a sudden, chairs are not functional as chairs. And it's just like nice. Yeah, it is. I was I was actually gonna like trying to give it to some like fan that like I like I kept it to like give it to a fan and like I never saw any fan say anything about the chair spot. So like I it just sits in my in my in my spare bedroom now. I mean, I think that's fine. Yeah, I mean, you know, if there's ever a day where you know a fan wants it, they can just fucking have it, to be honest with you. But yeah, I don't know. I, I digress so fucking much. Oh no, <laughs> it's fine. I really love talking with people. Um, that's part of the reason why I enjoy doing this. And you and I, I don't know, like even before we started recording, we were just kind of e- easy to talk with. So yeah, yeah, shooting the shit, man. It's important. Fucking shoot the breeze. Right. What? Like that's part of like that's part of what I enjoy about wrestling is I get to meet and talk with new people. Like people are interesting to me. People that I, people that I choose. Like, do you like the people watch? Yes. I fucking love people watching. Oh, I will like, because I've been traveling so much. I've been in like airports and a bus station and like, man, the people watching it, like airports and shit top tier. Yo, if you ever get the chance to go to DC, People watch in the presidential park. It's insane. It's nuts. The shit that goes on right in front of the White House is crazy. It's like gathering the juggalos don't have shit on what pops off in front and behind the White House. It gets nuts out there. Dang. Like, see, I want to go to the gathering. Like, that is like prime people watching. Oh, it's the best people watching. It's the best. Oh, it's the best. Like, cause you you see the craziest shit. And I'm just I'm so innocent and naive and wholesome. Like, I would just it would just blow my mind. I'm sure. Oh, uh, it's 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 insane. It's incredible. <laughs> you know. So, when you're on road trips or whatever, I'm a snackosaurus rex. I love snacks. Like I, um, I went to Bucky's for the first time. When I went to SCI, oh my god, I Welcome. was like beaming. Welcome was like, to the there's south. A, there's a deli case of beef jerky. Excuse me. It's it's the beef jerky kind of stuff. What is this? You know, I had I tried three different kinds, and um, one was super good. The other two, kind of meh. I like, I, like the beef jerky's jerky is not that good. I really like beef jerky. I was really excited about it. But the one that I had was like one of the ones I had was really good. Huh. The cherry maple something or other. I don't know. That does sound pretty fucking fire. It was really good. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm like a big like I'm I'm sweets all all day. And that was like that perfect like sweetness to that. 
savory meat. It was, yeah. It, it worked for me. But also, it's like I got a bunch of like, I, got, I just got a bunch of snacks. Like, I had to figure out how I was going to pack it all to get home. Like, I was like, okay, I have to put this, 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 and this in my carry on. I think I can shove this in my checked bag. Like, it was like a whole thing. And I didn't want it to get any of it to get like crushed. Yeah, now, like, um, when I'm on, like, like, uh, it, it depends on like the road trip. Like if it's like a, if it's like a like a four hour road trip, I'm like, bag of chips from the gas station, you know, a Red Bull or whatever coffee drink or whatever I want. Um, I mean, pretty simple. But like for like like I'm like like long road trips, I don't really bring snacks because like, if I'm driving like New York City, I'm stopping along the way and I'm eating. I'm eating good. Like I'm not. I'm not eating scrubby. Like I'm eating, we're stopping at, you know, whatever chain restaurant we don't have down here. We're, we're stopping at whatever fast food joint we don't have down here. Like, um, I just, it just depends. Like, uh, for, for like, you know, four or five hour trips, it's just, you know, chips, but like eight, 10 hours, 12 hours. That's that, that we're, we're getting into fucking prime time. You know what I'm saying? No, I, so I, I'm, I love snacks. Um, I like to have road snacks with me just in case like I get like tired or munchy, but yeah. like, I love stopping at like gas stations that we don't have here and seeing like what stuff that they have because different regional gas stations have different stuff. And I'm so, it's like, we don't have this here. And it makes me so happy when I discover a new snack. Yeah, definitely. Like they had, um, in uh in ohio they had uh what was it was uh it was uh fuck sour cream and onion um flaming hot ruffles i can't find them down here like i love that shit that's not something that i would probably go for but that's also not something i've ever seen so oh i love flaming hot flaming hot's my shit Mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a weenie hut junior. Like, no thank you. <laughs> Good old like, ocean no man. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, yeah, no, like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I'm a sucker for novelty, though. Like, I'm a major sucker for novelty. Like, uh, when I'm in, like, Detroit, I love to get, like, Fago Firework. Because it, it's, it's soda pop that tastes like, uh, I don't know if you guys call it pop or soda where you're from. I'm a pop person. I call it pop too. I noticed so, that you called it pop earlier when we were talking about it. You were oh, talking about it? okay, yeah, yeah. You were talking yeah, about so like, yo, it, pop it, into the audience, and I was like, pop guy. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I, yo, I it's not it. soda. It's not a coke. It's a fucking pop. All right, we're drinking fucking pop in here, and <laughs> uh, so I got some fucking fago pops and shit, and uh, we we stopped at this place called Jungle Gems on the way home from the gathering, and I don't know if you ever saw Jungle Gems on TikTok. But it's is it like a place. big crazy grocery store? Yes. And yeah. Yes, I have. <laughs> yeah. So we stopped in there and uh, we bought like all this like stupid. Fu- I spent like 150 bucks on fucking <sighs> junk food in there. Oh, Because yeah. it was like snacks from like India, Mexico, Japan, just like shit from everywhere. And they had a shit ton of Fago uh, firework, which tastes like, like those like red, white and blue uh, popsicles. The bomb pops. Bomb pops. Yeah. I love those fucking like, things. I want to try awesome. that so bad. It's so good. I have one bottle left of it. I bought like six bottles. <laughs> it's so uh, good. I, I really don't even drink pop like that no more. You know, like I drink beer. You know, <laughs> like I'm not gonna lie. Like when when you drink beer, you really don't really drink pop. You know, like I do every <laughs> now. I do with like lunch, but like you know, you know. <laughs> no, you're fine, man um no i am so like there's some gas stations down here that for some reason some of them have like a whole section of like eastern european stuff huh that's weird yeah and so it's like you go in and there's like candy from like where are they like russia and like countries kind of that used to be part of the Soviet Union. They're their own countries now. And like, these manufacturers haven't caught up. 
it's like it's crazy like i don't know like why at some of these specific gas stations there's like all of this stuff but like it's so exciting to like go yeah. and pick up pick up like candy from another country that's like that's like how it used to be like in chicago when i was a kid like we used to get like uh, all kinds of candies from like mexico and shit and it would like it would it wouldn't be like it wouldn't be hard to find like weird foods or weird candies from mexico like it would just be like you know, like, oh, it's cool. Like, I think, like, Mambas was one of them, which we like, we still have down here, so I remember it. But it'd be, like, some crazy flavor. And then, like, I'd be like, ah, oh, yeah, it's just, you know, whatever. I say that all the time. But then when I moved down here, I couldn't find none of those candies, you know, because just different distribution, you know. It's fucking sucks, you know. <laughs> I went, oh, I was so excited when I went to Chattanooga for Scenic City this year. I went to um, the pinball museum, which was super fun. But there's like, go in there. it was super fun. I would recommend it. I got to play like really old pinball machines, like from the seventies. Like that's cool. Did you check out the the biscuit joint next door? There's a biscuit joint called uh, Maple Street Biscuits. No, fucking phenomenal. I missed the biscuit. Yeah, it's it's literally right next door. It's fucking phenomenal. That's like when I worked when I worked downtown because I have a shoot job. When I work downtown, um, I always go there in the mornings to get a biscuit because it's like, it's just the best fucking biscuit you're going to get. Like, it's so good. I hate biscuits, but it's phenomenal. I went to the candy store, Rocket Fizz or whatever it was. Yeah, Rocket Fizz is dope. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, like, I'm a huge sweets person and I'm big into candy, just generally speaking. I was so stoked. There was, like, three different candies that um, I've only ever seen on tiktok from canadian candy store tiktokers that i couldn't like i haven't been able to find in the states like i haven't been able to find here anyway like and you go like you know like if i go to walmart or dollar tree or dollar general like if i can't find them at one of those three places like then i just assume it's like a specialty import but like i was so stoked i was able to find these candies like so stoked yeah Rocket I was like dope, man. geeking out. It was so much fun. I could have probably spent, if it wasn't hot, I probably would have bought more because it's like, I could only take things that wouldn't melt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, Rocket Piss is dope, man. There's like, there's some really cool shit in downtown Chattanooga. Like for me, there's like nothing cool left. Like I'm fucking, I'm here. You know? You've been all here, the cool you know? stuff. Yeah. Like if I came to like whatever, you know, town or city you live in, I'd be like, fucking, this place is awesome, you know? <laughs> you know? And I'd be like, no. <laughs> this place sucks. We do have, like, a couple of interesting candy stores here. But, like, we have a cool zoo. Like, I don't know, Omaha's whatever. Is what it is. Uh, it's fine. Um, but what is your favorite move to take and what is your favorite move to give? Oh, my favorite move to take? Oh, fucking none of them, because that means I'm losing. Uh, no, um, I, don't, I, I love a Tiger Driver, because it's just, it looks so, I don't know, it just looks so simple and so, like, brutal. Like, I love a Tiger Driver. Nobody really does them anymore. Um, my favorite move to give is probably the Acid Drop. That's, like, my finisher that I fuck up all the time. <laughs> because like i you know you do it at so many different places and, like you try to run up like uh, it's a uh, for anybody that doesn't know what an acid drop is it's spike dudley's finish where he runs up the ropes and then twists around and either does like an rko out of it or like a stunner i do a stunner out of it because doing the rko from that high up fucking sucks like it fucking hurts so bad <laughs> like you know if we're shooting here i'm gonna be real this shit fucking hurts um but, like, I love, like, the best feeling ever is when you hit the acid drop and it goes perfectly. Like, because it's a move to where you have to rely on yourself and your opponent to kind of, like, guide you on. Um, totally killing kayfabe here, but uh, it's 2022, so he gives a shit. But, uh, but like, when you, when you pull it off perfectly and it looks really good, like, the best, the best, um, the best acid drop I ever pulled off was against Derek Neal. And um, Derek, Derek guided me so perfectly. 
And when we hit, he just jumped up and just like sold the fuck out of it. Made me look like a million fucking dollars. Something that nobody's ever done before or since. Like Derek Neal is like such a fucking brother for that. Like he like he told me too. He goes, he goes, he goes, he goes, oh man, you do that? I'm gonna make it look fucking great, man. And I was like, oh really? He goes, you just watch, son, I'll show you. And I was like, okay, cool. I was like so scared, you know, I was like so nervous to work Derek Neal because he was like New South champion at the time. He had the big fucking stupid belt or it's like, this, it's like, like the belt, with, it's like this fucking big. It's huge. The human gold. Yeah. The belt's so fucking fresh. It's so dope. It's so big. But like, you know, like he was like, he was the man, you know, and he still is the man. Like I love him to death, but you know. Derek's great. Oh my God. I love him so much. I, I, I pester him. Just to fucking tell me Tracy Smothers stories and tell me stupid wrestling stories that only I would give a shit about, about like the Evansville Coliseum and shit. But, um, but yeah, like, I mean, I don't know, like taking a move, like I, pile drivers are cool, but it just, it depends on who's taking them or like who's giving them. I mean, like, um, I've had people give me pile drivers and it's been like, it felt perfectly and then, like, other times people give them to me and I can just feel my head hit the fucking mat. And it's like, I don't like that. But um, I really, I wouldn't know, but I, I would say, like, doing my finish and it goes perfectly always feels really good. Because, like, even when, like, it goes, like, eh, it looked okay, it still feels way better than <laughs> when it looked like shit, you know? Yeah. So, um, every wrestler usually has, like, at least one good either travel story where it was really funny or something exciting happened or like you almost died or a wrestling horror story where you get booked on a show and you get to the venue and you look around and go what the fuck did I sign up for so like what is the best one of those types of stories that you can tell me and if you need to like censor any names to protect people or yourself you can do that too Oh my god, I've had a lot of like what the fuck travel stories. Um I remember the first time the first time that I ever did a show away from where I trained at originally years ago. Um I got there late and um I got there like 15 minutes after what was supposed to be bell time and uh, I was late. I was a referee at the time. And so uh, I got there and I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry that I'm so late. And everybody's like, yeah, it's fine. The ring hasn't even gotten here yet. And I was like, what? And we're 15 minutes past bell time. And I was like, well, that's not good. And so we sit there and we sit there and we sit there. And then the ring shows up like an hour and a half later. Everybody are done left. They all, they, they already left. And at this point, it's just friends and family. And so I go out there, I fucking, I don't know anything about building a ring or tearing down a ring. I've never done it before. I've only, I've only been around rings that are always set up, you know what I'm saying? And so I'm like trying to tighten the ropes up, but I don't know how to, because like, there's like a lot of people would think that like when you go to tighten the ropes up, it's very easy. No, you have to have two people at each side going the same rotations and shit like that I still don't fully understand how to do it <laughs> to be honest with you I still don't I pretend like I do but I, I really fucking don't um I'm too afraid to ask uh what the fuck I'm doing but uh well so now everybody like will know <laughs> do I now everybody will know <laughs> they will know they will know and they, and they should know they should this is this is this is my way of telling everybody but um anyways uh I'm trying to tighten up the rope and some fan yells out, you ain't doing it right. And I was like, oh, uh, I'm doing it right. Come help me. And, you know, the, the fan was just heckling me. And um, so, like, the ropes are all shot. They, you know, they're not tight. You know, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. And um, anyways, uh, the main event goes out and it's a hardcore match. And I watch one guy hit another guy with an aluminum baseball bat. Like, for realsies, hit this dude 
And then he tossed it after he hit it and it just dinged off through this empty gymnasium. And nobody, nobody popped for it. Nobody made a sound. Nobody did anything. And I remember sitting up watching that and going, oh, my God, what have I gotten myself into? And what I got myself into was independent wrestling. That's what I got (laughs) myself into. (laughs) Oh, no. That sounds like Not a noise. Not a single noise. Nobody gave a shit that this man just got, like, shoot hit with a baseball bat. (laughs) Oh, my God. Uh, On that note. Uh, do you have any hidden talents? Um, no, (laughs) no, uh, I know how to do flooring, uh, ceramic tile, for instance. I know how to do that. That's probably my only hidden talent. Um, no, like, uh, I don't know. Uh, do you know who Pete Youngblood is? Yeah. Yeah. So Pete can balance all kinds of dumb shit off his chin. Like huh. he can do like like chairs and like ladders and like just stupid shit, right? He can bounce it all on his chin. It's fucking stupid. It makes me mad because he's so good at things and I'm not. But um he has hidden talents. I don't. Like <laughs> I have fucking none. You know, like I'm not good at card tricks. I'm not good at like none of that. I have fucking none, you know. Nah, that's fair. <laughs> I've bought like four guitars to try to learn how to play guitar. I still fucking still know how to play guitar. Oh, I am terrible at trying to play instruments. Oh lord, I'm bad. I love music, but I can't play a thing to save my fucking life. No, I fucking I can't. I can't even play the fucking radio. Like it's just it's it's just no good. Lord knows I tried and and yeah, terrible. No, I, just just fucking terrible. It's the fucking worst. I can't do I can't do nothing with instruments or balancing shit i i can't i'm i'm fu- i fucking suck i can't draw i can't write like i'm, I'm not, not good at anything that's not true at all you're great <laughs> like at I'm talking fucking... to people that's because that's the only thing that i'm good at is talking right to people. Same things, like i can like hold a conversation <laughs> you know like but right i can be polite and interested <laughs> yeah yeah like i fucking you know i'm not i'm not good at shit to be honest i'm good at i'm, I'm okay at wrestling you know oh um what if you could go back in time what would you tell a 10 year old version of yourself oh man i actually i told my fiance about this uh because i saw a tiktok that said that like your childhood version of you would feel safe with your adult version of you and um, if I could tell my 10-year-old year, ten self anything, I would tell my 10-year-old self that you were correct about what you thought I'd be doing, but you were wrong <laughs> with thinking I'd have a fucking contract. I got one of them. <laughs> you know, like, 10-year-old me thought that I would have a fucking contract and I would have, um, I would have, uh, I would have money and I would... I wouldn't be, I would be carefree in the world. Um, I would tell my 10 year old self that I appreciate uh, where you thought we were going, but we didn't make it there yet. (laughs) I appreciate your Um, optimism, but we're still working. But no, like I would, I would probably tell my 10 year old self, like, hey, we did everything you wanted to do and then some, and also we're having fun. And I would tell my 10 year old self that, um, no matter what your dream is, as long as it's not to be like the president or the astronaut or an astronaut and going to space, you're fucking good to go. Cause uh, I never, I never really thought that, I mean, like I, I knew uh, like at 10 years old, I knew I'd be a wrestler. I knew that. Like I knew I'd be a pro wrestler. I knew that I would have friendships with like past WWE wrestlers and interactions with these guys. Like, 10 year old me thought that I would be best friends with John Cena. 10 year old me did not know that I would be friends with Duke Dumpster Josie. They would have no fucking clue about that. You know what I'm saying? They'd be like, uh, Duke the Dumpster. And I'm like, you know, like, yeah, it's pretty fucking cool, right? And they're like, yeah, it's not John Cena. <laughs> you know, but because like when I was a kid, I thought that I would be best friends with like Randy Orton and fucking Cena and 
here I am, like, I love Duke the Dumpster, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> just where life goes, man. Like, that's what I tell myself, like, you know, fucking, you know, I, I think at the end of the day, I made 10 year old me happy, you know, like, uh, cause I knew I'd be a wrestler. I knew that, but I didn't know that it would be all that it's been. I didn't know that. Brent, news to me. <laughs> so just a couple more kind of, uh, easy breezy fun questions. And then I will not make you talk to me anymore. So no, you're fine. We can do this shit. We can go fucking however long you want. We can <laughs> fuck. We got number time. I appreciate that. I like. I'm a I'm a chatty person. That's why I do this. And like sometimes, it like when sometimes the conversation just comes easy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, like uh, I know I'm not the best. Uh, person to talk to I, I go on a lot of tangents you know what i'm saying a lot of fucking different sidebars and shit you know i can follow so I, I hope fine. this has been easy for you i hope it's been yeah really easy. i would rather have somebody that is talkative and goes on tangents and is having fun with it than someone i have to like beat an answer out of or that gives me just like brief like one word like okay <laughs> moving on i guess like what do you think about wrestling good think it's good and that's it you know right, it's like okay <laughs> <laughs> me too asshole you know that's your, like, look at your script you know you're like fucking uh, asshole 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 you know? <laughs> like, to be like i guess maybe i consider myself lucky probably because i mostly am able to pick who i want to talk with but also like sometimes i like uh christopher will tell me like hey you should talk to this person i'm like oh, okay um but like, luckily, I haven't had anybody be like a total dick to me. Yeah. Um, most people have been really nice. I've been really ex- fortunate to be able to talk to a lot of people I want to talk to. Like, and so I was kind of like, I throughout doing this, I've been doing it for about maybe a year and a half ish. Yeah, um, right. I'm very fortunate that I've been able to talk to a bunch of really cool people and. I decided that I really like talking with people like like you that are people that maybe haven't done like a whole bunch of podcasts or that maybe aren't don't have like the name recognition that some other people do. But those are the people that are more fun for me to talk with anyway. So for sure, yeah. Like I've, this is my second podcast. I've only done one other. Mm-hmm. Nice. First one, the first one around didn't really go that well. So I, you know you know this, this is my first podcast you know like <laughs> you had like your training wheels podcast like this is like your first yeah like, like full they bike. asked me like uh what do you like on the road and i'm like i drive to the fucking town i get there and i leave like i don't <laughs> this isn't the 80s baby like we're fucking you know like no nobody's like out, throwing beer cans out the window i'm fucking i'm driving to the town i'm going home <laughs> you know like Maybe I'll stop for a snack. Like, <laughs> yeah, like I mean, it's, how far is the drive? You know, like, it's four <laughs> hours. I'll get a bag of Doritos. If it's eight hours, we're eating good. You know, I love stopping at like we, you were kind of talking about this earlier, and I was side sidebar. I love being able to eat at places I can't eat here. Like, yeah, same seeds. That's what makes it fun. The first time I ate at a Jack in the Box, I was like, "You gotta be fucking kidding me! Why do I not have this in Omaha? This is great." I got churros. Like, and then you so have excited. about five, six times, and you're like, "Man, it's really not that good." I've only ever had it the once. Oh, it's really? Just, we don't, we don't have them here, and so it's like, if I happen to be on a road trip and I stumble across one, then I'll go. But like, or like, um, steak and shake, shut the front door. Oh, we don't have yeah, those here either. Shake. Yeah, we have that everywhere down here. Not for Val. Yeah, no, it's it's everywhere. Oh my god! Oh, so I I made Christopher and Jimmy take me to cookout when I was there for SCI. I was like, going to cookout. We don't have those here either. I love Chris to death. Chris is awesome. <laughs> Chris is the best. He's great. He's he's the one that brought me into all this. He's the one that's like, you should do this. And I'm like, I don't know. And he's like, do it. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And now uh... I'm here. He took over for me uh, doing the the fucking um, the hard cam for uh, Uncharted the night that they had. It was Cruel versus uh, 
God, who the fuck did Cruel wrestle that night? Uh, I was like, so like when I film these like wrestling shows, I don't remember like it all comes together. Because like, I'm I'm filming it, I'm trying to make sure everything looks good. It was Cruel. It was when Cruel won the uh, IWTV Deathmatch Championship. It might have been that July Fourth show. No. No, it wasn't. Uh-uh. Uh. Uh. Whoever whoever he wrestled that night, I don't remember who the hell it was. Uh, Mur- oh, Murdoch. It was Murdoch. Yeah. He wrestled Murdoch. That's right. I forget now because, like, like I said, when I film him, I don't get to remember. Like, I, don't, I really don't get to watch the show. But I remember yeah. um, Chris filmed the show for me so I could, like, make weapons. And uh, I had to catch Cruel on a dive that night. And um, no, it wasn't, it wasn't Murdoch. It was, uh, it was Slade. Ooh. It was Slade. Yeah, that was it was a badass match. Yeah, yeah, that was badass. Yeah, we had to catch. Uh, I had to catch Cruel that night, and so uh, um, Christopher filmed the show for me. So thanks, Christopher. I appreciate you. <laughs> He's great. He brought me into this whole little world. He's how you know brought me into knowing like what wrestling in the South is like and Southeast and. I, you know, I kind of knew from watching IWTV and stuff, but like IWTV and stuff, but like, um, really it's because he brought me into this stuff that I am so familiar with the Southeast and why I love it so much. Like, I love y'all down there. Yeah, like, no, it's awesome down here. And it used to suck down here, you know? <laughs> you it wasn't really always great down up. here. <laughs> like when I first got into it till now, it's like night and day. It's so different from like four years ago till now. It's it's incredibly different. Well, y'all have a real glow up moment down in the southeast. So we re- and we needed it too. You yeah, know, we really needed it. We we um, Jaden might get mad at me for saying this, and some of the other TWE people. Well, some other people just people in like our local area of wrestling might get mad at me for saying it, but we needed to get the fuck away from that Pauly Lee bullshit from where we were cartoony bullshit wrestling. And um, like I said, people might get mad at me about it. Fucking get the fuck over it. But uh, it's just, it's just the truth. We need to get the fuck away from it because we were looked at as Southern stupid cartoony bullshit wrestling. And that's why GCW came down here and did Wombat. Because they came down to Tullahoma and they treated Tennessee wrestling as this fucking stupid novelty fucking item. And that's not what it was. But, you know, thankfully, we're far away from that. Because at the time, Wombat was cool. It was cool that GCW came down and do it. But in reality, it just kind of made us look fucking dumb. Made us look fucking like shit. I don't know. Maybe I'm shooting a little too hard here, but... You know, that's how I felt about it, you know. You know, whatever. It's one, it, it, there's a fine line between, like, playfully poking fun and, like, being mean about it. Yeah, like, I'm not trying to, like, be mean or poke fun or nothing like that, but uh, it's just, like, when Wombat came down the first time, it was like, oh, this is really cool, but then the second time they came down, it was like, man, are we just fucking stupid, y'all? Like, Come on, you know, and thankfully now I think that we've, you know, uh, broken apart from that. And maybe uh, maybe me saying that isn't the best light on things, I guess. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I'm not I'm not the best professional person. You know, <laughs> like I'm just telling you my opinions on things. But, uh, you know, I felt like uh, I felt like for a long time we were laughed at. And like, it's nice to not be like the, the butt of the joke anymore. You know, like we like. Andre 3000 came out of the Source Awards in 1996 and said the South's got something to say in a time where rap was controlled by uh, by uh, West Coast and East Coast, right? It wasn't the South. It wasn't the Midwest. It was just West Coast and East Coast rap. And when Outkast came out and said the South's got something to say, the whole tides changed in hip hop, you know? And uh, I think the same thing happened when you know, we started having Uncharted down there and ICW started coming down and we had all these other things going on and like, it's like, okay, we're not just the, we're not the, we're not the joke anymore, you know? Like, uh, I'm not shit on GCW or nothing like that. Like, I'm not shit on none of them, but, you know, I think now we're, 
we're well on our way. And I, this totally off topic of what the fuck we're talking about. No. 100%, you know. It's, it's all interesting. It's all good to me. I, I appreciate that you're willing to just talk with me about stuff. So much appreciated. And a public forum too, you know. I mean, slightly public. Yeah, I mean, if, if any GCW diehards see that and they're like, you know, oh, GCW never came to make fun of, you know, Wombat, you know, with, you know, make fun of Southern Wrestling with Wombat, it's like, now well, look, go on back and look at it. You know, we were kind of getting made fun of, you know. Yeah, there's one, like, there's a difference between, like, laughing with and being laughed at. And it's like, haha, you know, cutesy funny, I get it. And then it sometimes it's kind of like, so mean spirited. For sure, yeah. It's just the way it goes, I guess. <laughs> you know? So uh, we talked a couple different times. You and I kind of talk in spaces. Um, this question kind of came from spaces. So uh, what is the biggest animal that you could take in a fight with just your hands, no weapons? Oh, fuck. Um, God damn it. None of them, man. I don't want to fucking hurt an animal. Um, you can pretend it's attacking you. A kangaroo would fuck me up. Yeah, it would. Whoop my ass. Uh, I, I, th- I think, I think, honestly, I even think like a bear cub could fuck me up. Um, I don't want to fight a horse. I don't want to fight a horse. That's not like it sucks. Um. I don't want to pick a chihuahua because people think that people are going to think that I just want to like punch a dog or something. <laughs> like, I don't know. Um, I don't know. A dodo. I think I'd probably fuck up a dodo. It'd be pretty easy. Obscure choice. Yeah, like give me something that's already gone. You know, like just dead and gone, ain't coming back. Like. Give me one of them, you know, like, we'll be, we'll see what happens. We'll see what shakes out in my favor, but, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, not a kangaroo. A kangaroo would fuck me up. Yeah, no, someone said kangaroo, and I was like, I don't think you understand how strong kangaroos are, but I'd probably get one good punch in on them, but I'd probably be, like, shaking in my fucking boots. I'd be so fucking scared. Like, I'm afraid of, like, fucking peacocks, you know, like, a peacock will fuck you up. Yeah. Don't fucking scratch you and shit. Like, nah, I ain't fucking with a peacock. They got, they got beaks. So, how do you take your pancakes? Um, uh, like, what do you like on them and in them? Uh, I don't. I hate pancakes. I'm not gonna lie to you. I hate, like, breakfast food. I'm not gonna lie to you. I love foul pancakes is the shit, but, uh, regular pancakes not a fan not a fan i don't like i don't like waffles okay. i don't like uh syrup i don't like anything with syrup um i just i don't know i, I don't like uh i don't like breakfast food i'm not gonna lie to you i'm sorry um but if i did like pancakes i'd probably have them with some like whipped cream on the top with uh chocolate chips and um some cinnamon gotta have cinnamon on there you know what i'm saying um that's probably that's probably me you know i don't i like i don't go to waffle house i don't like waffle house you know like i don't like uh, huddle house or ihop or none of that we had ihop uh icw weekend for the deathmatch circus and it was like the worst food i ever ate so bad interesting hmm. casey owens our uh the tw trainee or the trainee now wrestler Casey Owens um, ordered uh, like some eggs, like scrambled eggs or something at IHOP a few months ago. Actually, like probably about like six weeks ago. And um, he came, when, when the food came out, it had a fucking uh, bread tie in it. At IHOP. Yeah. And we hadn't ate like real food all day long. We were both like, fuck this, let's, let's leave. It was bad. Oof. 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 Yeah. Okay. Was, I mean, that's fair. Gnarly. So I'm going to take you on like a little journey. So just like close your eyes, like go on the journey with me. So imagine you're hungry. 
you want something to eat. You're like cruising through the store and you're like, I want something sweet. You turn down the cookie aisle and you're like, cookies are great. I love cookies. I want cookies. But you don't want chocolate chip cookies or peanut butter cookies. No, no, no. You want America's favorite cookie, which is the Oreo. So you go to the section with all the Oreos and you are looking around, but you don't want any of like the weird flavors. Like you're not about it. You just want like chocolate cookie, white cream Oreo. But like you still have options. So are you picking the thin Oreos, a single stuffed Oreo, a double stuffed Oreo, or like a mega stuffed Oreo? How much stuff oh, do you want in oh, Oreo? Oh, shit. Probably thin stuff. I don't like sweet stuff. Like, I, like, I just don't no more. Like, I just, uh, as far as it goes with, like, sweet food, I just, like, I can't do, like, I can do cheesecake every now and again. You know what I'm saying? Like, cheesecake, uh, cheesecake's always good but like as far as like uh the shit like that goes I just I just can't do it anymore well I mean I get it um I don't I I understand your perspective (laughs) um I am all about anything sweet like absolutely I just killed the whole format of the show Cookies, cake, candy, like, fuck me up. But, like, um, the unofficial correct answer is a double stuffed Oreo. Um, I get where you're saying you don't like sweets, so you would maybe go with the thin, which is the objectively, like, the worst Oreo. But if you don't like sweets, I can understand where you would feel that way. So um, I'm going to ask... This comes from our VIP Vic when we were doing lives. He would always ask this question. Now that we're not doing lives, I always ask this question in his honor. Who do you think has the best gear of all time? Eddie Guerrero. Nice. Eddie Eddie always had the best gear. He he was like the first I ever saw with like the metallic gear. Um, He had the, the... the half and half gear, like half color, half color. Um, I mean, Eddie Guerrero always had the best gear, even up till the day he died. Like, I mean, his gear was always just top notch. His boots, um, he just always had the best gear to me. Like, over Rey Mysterio, over everybody, it was always Eddie. Eddie always had the best gear. It was, it was always the coolest. I was a huge Eddie Guerrero fan. And I cried my eyes out the day that I found out he passed away. It was November 13th, 2005. November 13th is the same day as my father's birthday. And so I'll never forget that day. You know, always an Eddie Guerrero mark. Huge. Eddie Guerrero is the one that got me into ECW. Love wow. Eddie Guerrero. You know, Eddie Guerrero and Dean Malenko and ECW, it was, it was the best. It was the best. So do you have any upcoming shows? I do. I'm wrestling not uh I'm wrestling the 27th at um at uh TWE's uh 9 Year Strong and um I hopefully have something coming this fall winter. That's going to be really cool. It's going to be the biggest thing ever I've ever done. Beyond that, my schedule is incredibly open. Um, I have not been able to travel abroad for wrestling. So my wrestling schedule this summer has been more open than it's ever been. Uh, I've wrestled less this year than I ever have. Um, I've gotten a head on wreck, lost my car, uh, lost my job at the time, and I lost everything. So wrestling has been very... uh, plane this year for me it's been very like local it's been it's not I've not gotten to travel I've not gotten to do as much as I wanted to do this year just because I have to focus on myself to get back out there so um the only thing I have coming up right now in stone is uh TWE for nine years strong I'm wrestling don't know who I'm wrestling whoever it is I'm gonna beat the fuck out of them I don't give a shit you know Matt Griffin fuck off. I whooped your ass. I whooped somebody else's ass too. I've done it twice now, by the way. JC North, Matt Griffin, you can, both of them can go fuck themselves. I don't give a shit. Um, 
If, 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 if J.C. North was around right now, I'd still be kicking his ass. But now it's Matt Griffin, so, yeah, you know, whatever. Fuck him. Um, but uh, anyways, uh, and also, by the way, if Matt Griffin has one major fan, it's not me. If he has one mega hater, it's me. And if he has no haters, it means I left this fucking world. But um, anyways, uh, that's what I have coming up. I have that one day. And also, you can catch me at KOBK's uh, next show. Uh, I don't know what the name of the show is. I know the name, but I don't know the name because they uh, they used uh, song lyrics and song titles from sh- from uh, rappers and bands that I don't know of. So I don't really, I can't retain them. But um, I am wrestling at their October show, October fifth. No, shit. I don't know the name of their. I don't know what, the, what day of the show is. I'm. I'm. I'm a bad wrestler. I. I don't know. Anyways, I'm there. I'm there. I'm wrestling there. That those are the two shows I got coming up. Hopefully, something really fucking dope lines up around November, December area, something like that. It's if it goes off, it's gonna be fucking dope. I can't talk about it right now, otherwise I would, but I can't. But you can catch me at. TWE, I'm nine years strong, and you can catch me at KOBK's next show in October. I think it's October 15th, and if I'm wrong, sorry, Moe's. I fucking, I don't, I don't remember. But, um, but yeah, that's, that's where I'll be. And um, hopefully the November-December deal goes off, because if it does, you're about to see a lot of me in a lot of other places. Like, if okay. this pops off, um, you're, you're going to see me everywhere, hopefully. So we hope that happens. Yeah. But as far as uh, August 27th and October, no, 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 goes. Catch me there. Both TWE, both Red Bank, Tennessee. I don't remember the address of the TWE arena. So you're going to have to look that up. It's it literally is TWE Chattanooga. It's Google. But, uh, but yeah, that's where I'm at. And where I'm not is all the places that I'm not at. So there you go. So I just, um, I just want to let you know that this does premiere on the Action Wrestling YouTube. Um, so your, well, your, like I said, your, your like shout I out said, to Matt. <laughs> like I said, fuck you, Matt. Fuck you, JC. I would have kicked the shit out of you back in the day, too. If you would have fucking stayed your punk ass around, I'd have still beat the shit out of you. And uh, also, Matt, remember, I'm 2-0 and, oh, and you're 0-2. And also, Matt, I think that uh, G.I. Joe fucking sucks. So there you go. Matt Griffin, I got one of these for you. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, oh, hold on. I'm going to break this out for Matt Griffin. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, got one of them. Yep. Fuck you, Matt. I said it. You bald-headed son of a bitch. Grow a man bun and come talk to me. <laughs> you motherfucker. And honestly, fuck you. <laughs> Piece of shit. <laughs> your blazer and your fucking in your fucking pants. Fuck you. You know. <laughs> oh well. I don't give a shit. Fuck you, Matt. <laughs> come back down to Chattanooga. All right, come, come down from Tyrone, Georgia. Fucking. I'll say it to your face. We say it to mine. Piece of shit. <laughs> Fuck and- you, Matt. And on that note, <laughs> yeah, this has been the stack. I'm Val. It Pankers. used to air on the action fucking YouTube channel, but now it doesn't because Matt wants to silence the truth. <laughs> this has been CJ Lawler. Um, where can people find you on social media? Uh, Twitter, Instagram, if you have like a Facebook fan page, uh, Twitch, OnlyFans, TikTok, your merch store, plug it all. Uh, ProWrestlingTees.com slash CJ Lawler or CJ Lawler 423 or CJ Lawler 17. Try any of those. Um, that's where you can get the official Dick Too Big shirt um, that I got, that I made when I was, uh, I just got in a car wreck and I needed money and I still need money. So buy the t shirt, give me money because by the time Pro Wrestling Tees gets their cut of my money, I owe them money. So buy some shirts so I can get out of debt with uh, whoever owns whoever owns that. I don't, I don't know. I really don't care. But uh, 
facebook.com slash TJ Lawler 423. Uh, that's my like page, but nobody really uses Facebook now because it's Twitter. Uh, Twitter.com or at CJ Lawler, L A W L E R, just like Jerry the King Lawler, you fucking asshole. You know how to spell it. Um, uh, Instagram is Instagram slash fuck Matt Griffin. No, I'm just playing. It's Instagram at uh, nobody fresh. That's my Instagram. Um, uh, myspace.com slash super fuck Matt Griffin. That's the MySpace. Um, and uh, beyond that, I think that's all the social medias I have. Um, yeah, that's it. I don't have a Discord because I don't really know how Discord works yet. I, 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 I don't know. But I know that Matt Griffin's not on there. So <laughs> mind you, I have a super beef with Matt Griffin. I don't know if you picked up on that yet. You know, I, I gathered that. And mega I'm, beef. I'm excited to see how that plays out. I just beat him a few weeks ago. I feel like he might be coming back for you, though. I don't think he will. Two and oh, nah. And Matt Griffin, if you're listening to this, fuck you. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Once again, thank you so much, CJ, for hanging out with me tonight. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure and- to kick it. Be sure to uh, tune in next week when I talk to somebody else, I'm sure. So thank you, everybody. Yeah, whoever they are, they're super fucking fresh and follow them on all their socials because they're the fucking shit. If they're on here, they're the shit. If they're not on here, then they fucking suck. And that goes for you, uh, Adam Bomb. <laughs> if you don't get Adam Bomb on here, then he ain't shit. He really ain't. And on that bombshell... We are ending tonight. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you again, CJ. Take it easy. Thank you.